Welcome to the Weekly Lead Podcast. This is Week 19, and I'm pastor and podcaster, Becky Tirabasi. And I want to invite you to just one of these days, join me on YouTube and watch the Weekly Lead. In fact, maybe over the next four weeks, because I have something special I want to invite you to join me in doing for our nation. And I also have some show and tell items. So right now I'm holding up a silver and gold cuff that I was given with my initials on it, but inside are uh, some numbers, June 9, 1994. That was the day I spoke at the Greater Cleveland Billy Graham Crusade. I met Billy Graham. I received a Bible engraved um, and signed by Billy Graham. And I thought over the next few weeks, I would share some of Billy Graham's more renowned or well-known statements on the Bible and prayer. Because the weekly lead is based on a call to leaders using L-E-A-D. L for loyalty to God's word, E for encouraging others, A for advocates to the young generation, and D, devotion to prayer. Today, I thought I would just open with a quote by Billy Graham. When the gospel of Jesus Christ is presented with authority, quoting from the very word of God, he takes that message and drives it supernaturally into the burn, I, I keep saying that, into the burning heart, but he wrote into the human heart. I, I ask you this question. Have you ever read through the Bible? Have you ever let God take a message and drive it supernaturally into your heart? L, which is loyalty to God's word in the weekly lead, I wanted to quote George Mueller again. He was someone from the 20th century who was an, a, an amazing man of God who housed and clothed orphans, thousands of orphans. And in our culture and generation, few people would consider doing that. He was compelled to do it. But what did he say about the call upon his life, which I believe God's trying to make a call upon the life of every believer in America, every believer who is listening to the weekly lead each week. George Mueller said, the primary business I must attend to every day is fellowship with the Lord. The most important thing I do is read the word of God and meditate on it. Thus, my heart might be comforted, encouraged, warned, reproved, and instructed. L is for loyalty to God's word. E is encouraging to others. What does that word mean? It means give hope. Every time you walk into a room, is it in your mind to give hope, to encourage others? Or do you correct? Do you criticize? Do you reprove? Do you ignore? Do you, what do you do? What if you spent every day thinking about and then acting upon ways to encourage others. A is for advocates for the young generation. We have come to a point in our nation, I'm sure of it, I'm convinced of it, that you, you and me, the average believer, must become the advocate of the young generation in your sphere of influence. Many of you know I do a Burning Heart 21-day adventure. Some of you are in the middle of a 21-day adventure with me right now. But it's free. It's free to do a 21-day adventure with the young generation if you just go to burningheartsinc.com. Why? Why do I encourage this? Because it's a game changer. It's a life changer. And what does the young generation need? They need something that will spark change for their lives that will draw them back to God. And then D is devoted to prayer. Again, I quote George Mueller. When we pray, he writes, we speak to God. 
Through his word, our Father speaks to us, encourages us, comforts us, instructs us, and and reproves us. What happens when you pray? It's a two-way conversation with the living, loving God. And what should happen at the end of a day when you spend one hour a day with God? I pray, I believe God is calling you to become a leader, a leader in our nation that would actually have a prayer meeting in your home, in your workplace, on your campus, in your church, once a week, like I do in my church and in my home, my prayer house in Washington, D.C. This isn't something that's overwhelming. It's something that every believer should desire to do, call people in your sphere of influence together to pray. So each week on the weekly lead, I try to give you my best quotes on prayer and Bible reading because I believe a prayer and Bible revival is coming, must come to turn our nation back to God. L, loyalty to God's word is something that I have for over 20 years encouraged people to do, to read through the entire Bible in just 15 minutes a day. Every week on the weekly lead, I tell you, here's what's coming if you're following along in the Change Your Life Daily Bible. And 100,000 people have the Change Your Life Daily Bible. Over the past two decades, one person at a time, one event, one small group has accumulated into 100,000 Bible readers. But my question is, are you reading the Bible or is it on a shelf? Is it in your car? Is it on your bedstand? I believe God is calling a nation to open the Bible and read it, just like George Mueller said, just like Billy Graham said, in every revival, the Bible must be revived as God's voice into our lives. So this week, you're going to open the Old Testament and in the Change Your Life Daily Bible in just 15 minutes a day, you will read Old Testament, New Testament, a psalm and a proverb every single day. You open 1 Samuel today. You're going to read about Hannah, the wife of a priest who went to the temple and begged God for a child. And year after year, she remained unable to have children. One time in the temple, she prayed so hard that a priest came up to her and said, are you drunk? You're so passionate in your prayer. You're so out of control. And instead, she remained fearless in front of the priest and said, no, I'm praying for a child. And in her prayer, she told the Lord she would dedicate that child to the Lord. That child became the prophet Samuel, the priest Samuel, and he would hear God's voice as a child, and she would dedicate him to the Lord, and he would go to the temple, and even in the midst of priests who were plenty old, here is a child that heard God's voice, and what did he say to God? Speak, your servant is listening. You certainly don't want to miss this week opening the Old Testament book of 1 Samuel and reading the prayer of Hannah. In the New Testament, we're in John chapters 5 through 7. Jesus feeds 5,000 with just a few loaves. He walks on water, and then the people around him, after all of this, say to him, give us bread. He said, I'm the bread of life. Believe in me. Believe in the one whom he sent today in our nation. In this hour, people need this same experience to open the word of God, to read it, and hear Jesus say, I am the bread of life. When you open the book of Psalms, This week, you're going to read a long psalm, 106. It's historic. It's a remembrance prayer. At the same time, it's a prayer of conviction. You know, every single day I talk about praying one hour a day, 
talking to God and listening to God. We listen to God by opening the word. And what might he say when you come to this place of contrition? You've given me this, you've done this, you've opened this door, and Lord, what have I done with what you've given me? You cannot finish reading through the Change Your Life Daily Bible on any given day without reading one or two or three little zingers from the book of Proverbs. This week, you're going to read that jealousy is cancer in your bones. What should your conclusion be at the end of reading that? Get rid of jealousy. When you feel it, tell it to go away. When you feel it, Know that this is an emotion and a a conviction I must have to get rid of jealousy. It's cancer. It's deadly. You don't need it. Don't entertain it. L is for loyalty to God's word. It's the foundation of how you lead as a man or woman or student who follows the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I'm looking for leaders, not followers. Jesus is looking for followers. You must read the Word of God to become an empowered, fired up, full of the Holy Spirit leader. E is encourager to others. Did Jesus walk in a room and see the least and the lost and do anything but encourage? He would tell a story. He would give hope. He would give hope. In my own church, I have a young man who came into our church, and he was hopeless. And without telling anyone what he was struggling with, he was invited to a community group. He was given a daily Bible. He came to a prayer meeting. And within a very short amount of time, he said this uh, statement. The pursuit of holiness by the young adults in our church, in our community group, gave me hope for wholeness and healing to turn back to God. And in over six years of running from God, it only took a few months of being with people who read God's word, who pursued holiness, who prayed regularly because life with God, needed the input of the Holy Spirit and the presence of others praying for and with us. He understood that their pursuit of holiness gave him hope to pursue holiness in his life. Will you be an encourager to others who are in your sphere of influence rather than someone who criticized? Will you bring hope into every room that you enter? L is for loyalty to God's word. E is for encouragement to others. A leader must be an encourager. A is for advocates for the young generation. You know, I've been talking about this for 19 weeks. A leader must be an advocate for the young generation. I received a letter this week. I'm 38 years old, and I've read the Change Your Life Daily Bible for two years and counting. God introduced me to Becky's book, Let Prayer Change Your Life, and then shortly after, the Change Your Life Daily Bible. Well, a few months ago, God had been telling me that I needed to work with the youth at my church. I kind of kept pushing that idea aside because I didn't feel qualified. And so many things started coming up as confirmation. And then I received Becky's email to join the lead team. And when you join the lead team, you get a 20-page research paper on, it's called um, Restoring an Aching Soul. And when you sign up to join the weekly lead team, you receive it. So she said, I've been so encouraged by the podcast. God is preparing me to reach the youth in my church and maybe even in my little town in South Carolina. So I'm going to help the younger generation because they need it now more than ever. And God reminded me, God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Will you join the weekly lead team? Download that 20-page paper. And what will happen? You'll find out more how to become one of my 100 weekly leaders. 
You know, I close with D, devoted to prayer. For 20 years, I've traveled over that, 30 years, all over America, teaching people to pray for one hour a day, men, women, students. And I'm calling you. Will you join me in not only devoted to prayer in your own life, one hour a day, and you can do that by taking the Burning Heart 21-Day Adventure And for 21 days, pray one hour a day and see what God might do. If you cannot establish that habit, this should help you. It's free at burningheartsinc.com. First thing you do, I ask you, pray one hour a day. But more so, would you be devoted to prayer and start a prayer meeting in your own house, your own church, your own organization, your dorm floor? Would you? your own neighborhood, start a once a week, 30 to 40 minute prayer meeting for revival in America. If you'd just follow me along daily on Instagram, Becky Tirabasi, that's all you have to do is search for my name. Go to the link in the bio. You can receive um, the 20 page paper on restoring an aching soul. You can take the Burning Heart 21-Day Adventure. Everything's free. It's a, it's a wonder to me why more people don't take the adventure, sign up for the lead team, read the Bible daily. Everything's free. God is calling us to change our nation. One person, one prayer meeting at a time. Will you be loyal to God's word, encouraging to others, an advocate for the young generation, and devoted to prayer? I hope so. Join me weekly, will you? And invite your friends to the weekly league.